This is Dr. Brian Dury, uh, Chairman of the International Myeloma Foundation, and joining me today is Leo Dickerman, who is a, a patient who has had high-risk uh, smoldering multiple myeloma and was uh, brave enough to enter into the ASCENT trial, an aggressive treatment trial for the management of high-risk smoldering myeloma, and has done incredibly uh, well with that treatment. And so we're very pleased to have a chance to, to chat with Leo about how this all came about. Uh, and so, so, Leo, maybe we can just start with you telling us a, a little bit about yourself and your family, if you don't mind. Of course. I am 58 years old and have been married for 34 years to my wife, Jennifer, and, and together we have four children, and their ages are between uh, 28 and 16, and it's been a great journey. We met in college in Bloomington, Indiana at IU, and we did spend time out in California from, I want to say, 1989 or so until 95 or 96. Okay. Time frame, it's been so long. I've been Apparently, at this, at this point, I can't even remember it. Oh, no worries about that. But we had our first two children at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Which I know well, obviously. And then we moved back to the great state of Indiana and had two more children eight years later. And got two of those through college and, and another one down in Bloomington at IU and one more still in high school, a junior in high school. So uh, we're not empty nesters. Uh, we're approaching that era in our life, I suppose, unfortunately. Uh -huh. It's a pleasure to obviously have this opportunity to speak with you and hopefully motivate and provide insight to your audience in regards to multiple myeloma and the, and the study and what powerful things it uh, has created for and change in my life after being diagnosed with multiple myeloma in approximately 2009. Yes, yes. So, so tell us a little bit about that. How did that diagnosis come about? Well, I was actually, I was a blood donor and I had been rejected a couple times because I was anemic and then went to my general practitioner. I always got an annual, still do, get an annual exam and right. with blood tests and so forth. And she discovered an issue with my blood, with high protein levels. Uh -huh. So she then brought in a specialist to look at that and it was discovered that I had uh, smoldering multiple myeloma. Right, right, right. At that so what were some of your early test results? They discovered that that high protein was because of a myeloma protein in the blood. Was that like an IgG protein or what type of protein was it that they found? Do you know? Well, I don't know. I apologize for that. That's okay. I don't remember what it was. You know, it's kind of Greek to me. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. And so then obviously they did a bone marrow test and then they found that there was some increase in the in the plasma cells there, I guess, right? Exactly. There was this stuff that uh, smoldering myeloma level, yeah, that was discovered. So I was decided at that point with my oncologist to take a wait and see, a wait and see approach. Yeah, yeah, because he was very, you know, positive on the rapidly changing environment for the treatment of multiple myeloma patients. Right, and you know, there's really nothing that we need to do right now. We can wait and see and. If we're, we're fortunate, we'll be able to uh, have some additional drugs discovered and, and new drug combination that perhaps would lead to a better outcome than what we would do currently for you. And, you know, they're becoming more and more patient friendly and less negatively impactful on your body. Exactly. A lot of very, very good advice there from your doctor, I would say. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So with that, you know, at that point in time, I really didn't know anything about multiple myeloma. So I began a search process, you know, and that always obviously starts with the internet and things of that nature these days. And, you know, I did a lot of work on researching it, what it means, what it is, and what are the therapies and what the potential outcomes are and things of that nature. I was involved and still am involved with St. Vincent's Ascension Health various hospitals here in the Indianapolis area. So, and I met their person that was in charge of their oncology department. Her name was Linda House. She ultimately actually went to work for as director with the um, cancer support community. And I believe they're located, their headquarters are in Philadelphia area. And she introduced me actually in 2010 as part of it. I was a patient advocate for them with multiple myeloma. She had asked me to participate because she knew of my participation with St. Vincent Hospitals here in central Indiana. Right. And I actually met Dr. Craig Platt and Dr. Joe McKeel, who I believe you probably both know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Oddly enough, I, I met them in 2010 and I stayed in touch with them because we both 
served on the same committee for the cancer support community, and it was the patient registry, National Patient Registry Board. At that time, I asked Joe, we were, I think we were heading to the airport or something. We were in a car together, and we were heading to the airport after a meeting in Philadelphia. And I said, hey, Joe, if the time ever comes that I need to have actual therapies started, would you mind if I reached out to you and talked to you about what my physician was contemplating. And he said, absolutely, no problem. So over the years, we stayed in touch and through the cancer support community. And I guess it was at about in 2018, my physician at St. Vincent suggested that we start treatment, that the protein levels were starting to rise to a place where treatment was probably appropriate. A good idea. Yes, yes. I was starting to get preliminary bone damage or actually no bone damage, but the levels were starting to get elevated. So was it at this point that you got referred and I believe you you met up with Dr. Rafat Abinar, right? It's a really small world. So I reached out to Joe, and as you know, he was at the Mayo Clinic at that one point. Right. And he had just switched over to the IMF, obviously, thank God, the institution that you founded. And I said, Joe, I, my doctor said it's time for me to start some treatment, and I wanted to know in the Indianapolis area, I had done some additional research for a second opinion, and I found an individual physician that was highly regarded and in Rafat Abinar. And I asked if Joe knew him. And he said, I absolutely know him. And in fact, I'll put you in contact with him right now. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, great. And I said, fantastic. He said, because he's actually part of a study that we are commencing for patients that are precisely in the position that you are in at this time. And that was in April or actually in May. Of 2018, Joe and I hooked up and exchanged emails and talked. And I was with Rafat two days later. I had received an email from Rafat, and he said, "Absolutely, I'd love to meet with you. Let's look at your chart. Let's do some, you know, we'll, we'll do some review." And he said, "No, your position is right. However, I'd really like for you to consider being a participant in our study that we're just now commencing. And actually, you're going to have to wait two weeks, but you'd be perfectly qualified for this study." So obviously, I uh, was very enthused about that because I'm a big believer and your legacy is only what you leave behind in the form of your actions and being able to participate in a study that might be able to help other multiple myeloma patients. It was just perfect for me. A very, very fortunate connections. Absolutely. Friendships uh, mean a lot and can help everyone out uh, as we collaborate together. You know, it is amazing. Yeah, I think mean, second opinions are critically important for all multiple myeloma patients. Right. Without that concept of the second opinion being drilled into me by the, all the various folks, you know, including your your websites and cancer support communities websites and other people, there was nothing wrong with the opinion I got. It just let leading seeking out that second opinion led me to a very different kind of an outcome than I would have otherwise ever believed them that would be available to me. Right, right. Absolutely. Being able to participate in a potential cure for multiple myeloma. Absolutely. So uh, fast forward uh, two or three weeks, the trial got opened up. And so you were able to uh, take a look at the details of, of this trial. And then you, I guess, got started uh, fairly quickly, probably. I did. I actually started, uh, we had planned a trip to uh, Italy with our church group. I got qualified and everything. And then once we returned from that trip, I immediately started the regimen. So obviously, this is a very uh, strong combination. For our listeners, this protocol that was opening up is a trial called the ASCENT trial, which has the intent, the lofty goal of, of really attempting to cure patients with this type of early phase of, of myeloma, what we call high-risk smoldering myeloma. And the treatment consists of four uh, medicines, uh, the daratumumab, which is the monoclonal antibody against CD38, and then the drug combination of Kyprolis, which is a, what we call a proteasome inhibitor similar to Valcade, Revlimid, which is one of our IMIDs, plus dexamethasone. And so it's a, it's a strong combination. How did you manage uh, as that treatment was getting started? It is obviously a pretty strenuous regimen of drugs. And I apologize, I just want to step back for a second and just say having this study available and having the ability to be the first patient to participate in it and all the work that you and the IMF have done, I, I, and I know that the organization has led this study on behalf of all multiple myeloma patients. You know, I just can't tell you how much it is greatly appreciated in the investment of time, dollars, money, and effort over the years uh, leading to this potential 
is uh, monumental and greatly appreciated by all of us. Well, thank you so much for that. It means so much to us. And I didn't mean to, you know, I don't want to digress, but I wanted to make sure I got the opportunity to say that to you personally and to your entire staff, obviously, your wife and, and everybody that's involved with IMF, because without you and, and this, this team, we wouldn't be at where we are today in, with this disease. Thank you. Thank you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I know there are other people out there who feel the same way, a lot of other people. So the regiment was intense. I would say that, you know, as a result of knowing Joe and Craig and then meeting Dr. Abenar, I had a great deal of trust, already developed a great deal of trust with Joe and with the organization and their real true dedication and honest efforts towards helping multiple myeloma patients for all the right reasons. Fantastic. And this opportunity, given the timing of it, it just felt like it was a message sent from God that I had to, had to participate in it, regardless of how strenuous it was and how challenging it would be from a physical standpoint. I would tell you that there's a reason why <laughs> And the name the name of the drug, it's 21 days of the pill that I had to take. I apologize. I'm just escaping the name of it. Revlimid, yes. Revlimid, thank you very much. No worries. Revlimid for 21 days. I, I now fully understand why they don't have it for 22 days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, it can be tough, yeah. It is tough, and but I, I will tell you the results and speak for themselves. And it, it is manageable. I mean, it's wearing, but alternatives to the heavy-duty therapies and that became much more manageable over time. Right. You moved into the consolidation and then into the maintenance. And so one of the big aspects of this particular trial is that it's a contained block of treatment. In other words, there's an intent to have this aggressive approach. But then after the two years, you complete the treatment and then you're off the regimen. And so it's a powerful effort to really do the best job possible in that time frame. It was manageable. I honestly think I only missed one day of work over the two-year period. Wow. I was able to continue to work and be sharp at my desk and be able to manage our business affairs and, and manage accounts and client relationships and so forth just fine. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, you just take it in stride and, you know, get a lot of rest. Uh-huh. Focus on eating healthy. Yep. Getting a lot of rest, knowing that after two years, the outcome could be phenomenal number one, and number two, that you're completely off all of these drugs. And I would, you know, doctor, I'm now 15 months. Off. No drugs whatsoever associated with multiple myeloma. This is phenomenal, that off uh, off treatment period. Uh, be, before we get to that, I do want to ask you uh, more about that because it is uh, so important. But as you were moving through the treatment, when was that first moment where Dr. Abenar was able to say that you had reached that excellent response where the minimal residual disease test came back at a negative level? At what point did, did that happen for you? You know, it was amazingly fast. Okay. I want to say it was within four to five months. All right. Happy to provide you with the charts, but the impact was, was virtually immediate compared, considering, you know, that I'd only been on this regimen. So the first couple months, you know, your body's still getting adjusted. So you had a lot of capabilities to handle, but after about five to six months, you know, you're starting to get worn, <laughs> you know. And then you get this great news. So, you know, it's like, hey, it's all right. It's going to be okay. And that's the first stage in the most challenging stage. And then the next stage is, you know, obviously become a, a little bit more user-friendly, patient-friendly. Knowing that you have an excellent prognosis and knowing that it has become something that is not no longer going to be the reason for your death, but it's actually going to just be a managed set of circumstances. A manageable situation. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, or perhaps one that you don't have to deal with at all ever again, which is what we're all praying for, of course. Exactly, exactly. My gosh. Myeloma is no longer an end-all. Yes. We can help our, all of our patients by getting them, getting blood tests routinely at an earlier age in your life and doing it each year, you know, and, and medicine that is it's prevention. Yes. You know, and catching things early is the name of the game. And I'm 
walking, talking proof of that. Absolutely. Well, this is just such a, a positive story for, for everyone who is listening to us today. I have to say that your strength and resilience through all of this is uh, really inspiring. I mean, you are uh, just strong in every way, both mentally and uh, obviously physically, to come through this therapy in, in such a sterling uh, uh, fashion. So this is uh, really, really good. And so as you move forward, you know, you came in and then there was that end to the treatment, that last round of, of medicines, and then you've been off for 15 months now, which is phenomenal. Yeah, and I feel great. You know, obviously, thank God for the outcome and him putting these people in the places where they became in my life at the right times and, and so forth to make an impact. I really think that anything that any of us can do that are listening to help our fellow patients and fellow man through making efforts to make future generations and, and of other people to make it easier for them, then, then that's what we have to do and should do. And for me, it was a real, very easy decision. I know it's not an easy decision for everybody because not everybody has the same connectivity. Oddly, you know, my very peculiar connectivity, but I would promote that people do their own homework and do their own research and be their own best advocate so that you can create these kinds of relationships as you move down your healthcare road so that when the time comes, they are in place and you have trusting relationships with people that can help you lead to proper and good, you know, great decisions for your own health and your family. And tremendous advice. Tremendous advice. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Obviously, it turned out to be uh, very helpful and important for you, but I think that for, for everyone, this is very, very good to to kind of be looking forward where um, you, you have your connections in place so that when that decision comes along, uh, you can be ready to have good input to have the best decision possible. So it's just so wonderful to have a chance to talk to you and hear how well things uh, have gone. Now, how often do you go in to see Dr. Abenar now? I go in every three months. I actually just saw him last week, and he's doing very well. He is, you know, a phenomenal physician with his patients. You couldn't ask for a better advocate and physician to be on your side of the table and looking out for your best interest. He is phenomenal. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. When was the last time that you had a bone marrow test? That was about five months ago. I've had all of my treatment. Dr. Abenar obviously is associated with Indiana University Health. Again, go to your best healthcare, best physician, regardless of the network they're in for, the, for any specialty that you need help with, and they did a phenomenal job. And, you know, bone marrow uh, <laughs> extractions are not a whole lot of fun, but <laughs> I can tell you that they get easier with time, and the more you've had done, I think in my entire 12 years of this uh, process, I think I'm up to, I don't know, eight, eight or nine, maybe even 10. And uh, each time I get one done, it seems like it gets a little bit easier. Glad to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's not fun at all. But uh, anyway, very, very important to inform us about the status. And uh, those recent results in your case have been tremendously good, uh, very, very uh, encouraging. And so based on what we know, uh, uh, and you, you're already indicating it, uh, is that uh, your your rapid response, your sustained response up to, you know, this 15 months of of treatment. These are very, very positive and encouraging indicators that indeed your longer term outcome is going to be in good shape. Just so encouraging. I very much appreciate your willingness to kind of give back, you know, your, your experience and your words of wisdom and this stretching a hand back to patients who are coming along next to try to guide them and to help them is just greatly, greatly appreciated. It's an honor to be able to help other people. I only really do it because it helps me be a better person by helping other people. I get the, it's the biggest benefit is from, you know, it's like, uh, it is, is the person that's giving the help because it makes you feel good and help, you know, good about your, the world that you're living in. There's a lot more out there to be positive about than people come to realize many times. That's right. And you have to look for those positive things and enhance them and uh, embrace them. Yes. I just want to close by thanking you so much. And I do believe that your story will be inspirational for so many. And I'm optimistic that the outcome, as I say, will be excellent in your case. We'll just uh, continue to continue to monitor it every year and uh, hopefully we'll make it to five and then 10 years and maybe we can make some kind of an official announcement about multiple myeloma. <laughs> That's right. We'll be we'll be there together. And uh, as the first patient, uh, you'll be there. I don't know what your, your beverage of choice is, but we can certainly have it available. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you so much for this opportunity. All right. Have a great day, Leo. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to this podcast. This has been Conversations with Dr. Brian Dury. For more information about multiple myeloma and the International Myeloma Foundation, please visit myeloma.org.